Hello, so for my tutorial, I'm actually going to uh, show you guys how I did the really easy squash and stretch using the scale tool. So, um, if we get into a composition, you'll see that I put a shape layer on the back just to, you know, give it a little bit of a background. Um, that's really easy, you already know that. Once that's there, lock it so you can't move it. Um, and then what you'll want to do is basically, um, for this tutorial, I guess, just make a random shape. I decided that I was going to use a square, um, and so I'm going to make that right now. Um, and yeah, I chose blue because, you know, why not? Um, also, for some reason, I noticed that when I was screen recording, none of the external windows popped up, so you can't actually see the color that's going on in there. Um, but anyway... So once I get my square aligned in the center, like, you know, thanks to the align tool, I go to this tool called in the upper right corner, which you saw me hover, called the pan behind tool. Um, it basically helps you be able to move your anchor point. And so I like to move it to wherever the base of the object where I want it to move is going to be. Um, so I moved it to the bottom middle and I place a keyframe and then basically what you want to do now is you want to sort of like map out how your character or like in this case your square is going to be kind of like squishing and moving around. So I know that kind of like the fire hydrant I made, he this little dude is going to be jumping up and then falling back down. And so you sort of have to think, okay, well, where does the weight start? Like where does that exaggeration start? And so it always starts with some sort of buildup and then, you know, the smear as it's falling up or falling up, going up and then the collapse upward and then the fall down where the smear happens again into the uh, resting. Um, so what I like to do is basically map out that position. Um, I know some people like to map out the position first. That might be easier for you and before doing the scale. Um, I personally just like doing the scale so I can envision the, like, motion of what I'm seeing, like, what I want, um, of what I want it to actually be. And so once you get all those positions down, you want to try and make the, um, make the selection feel as natural as possible. So, um, my, you know, I decided, you know what, I want my square to be kind of made out of this gelat like, gelatinous material, so I give it a really big wind up or, and then a really big smear. And then um, from there, I sort of decided, okay, well, how will that react? It's going to kind of bounce inward towards itself before it smears as it falls down again. Um, so you, the whole time that you're doing this, you definitely want to be thinking about how your character is going to be moving in real life, basically, um, and like what kind of materials it's made out of and um, from there kind of decide how you want it to go. So I think from there, we are actually gonna jump forward um, to see a little bit of a finished thing about what it might look like. Really, you just have to play around, kind of see what feels natural with you, um, and then go from there. And then I guess what I also wanted to show is that once you get your animation down, you don't, it's like a huge pain in the ass to just go through and like say it's too slow. It's really a pain in the ass to go through and um, rearrange all these keyframes to sort of fit where you're like sort of to get to a higher speed. So what you actually can do is you can pre-compose your animation into its own separate composition. When you time remap, it basically allows you to speed up or slow down things without uh, completely changing all your keyframes.